we're going to start off with the forward CG configuration we have here. The CG is at 32% cord. And we know that our, our angle of incidence is 3 degrees. So let's start off with an angle of attack of the entire aircraft of, three, of uh, 0 degrees and see how we can trim our aircraft here. So we'll put the wing at 3 degrees. So we don't have enough lift yet, so we can say we can decrease this. And we're getting closer to 55 pounds and zero, zero torque. So right here, we're, we're pulling 0.98 Gs, not quite exactly uh, 55 pounds. So we could use Excel's goal seek here. So that just involves setting this one to 55 by changing, let's say, the angle of attack. So we increase angle of attack of the wing. We have 55 pounds now. However, now we don't quite have a balance of torques. So we can go back and goal seek the torque to zero by adjusting the H dab angle of attack. So now that's zero, but we've increased our downforce a little bit. So this went down a little bit. So, so we can just do a few rounds of this, putting this to 55 by changing here. And there we go. So that's a trimmed aircraft. So we can fly at 1G in a stable configuration there. And notice that the angle of attack of the wing is 3.26. So actually the angle of attack of our aircraft is 0 0.26 degrees. So let's go back and adjust in here. So this is 0.26 degrees. And we have our CG once again at 0.32. And we can look back here. So let's just make sure that the rest in this sheet is making sense. So our center of pressure is at 0.406. So if we go adjust this, there we go. It's already set rate right? at 0.406. So we know where our lift is. So we know that this measurement here between the lift and the CG is 2.30 behind it. So we have our 2.3 and we have here the 45.77 from the H tab to the CG. And because this is a almost symmetric airfoil, I'm just assuming here that the center of pressure stays at 25% cord for this airfoil. And we can, we can look at that. It's a NACA 2415. I mean, at any significant level of lift, it's, it's pretty close to 25% cord. So what we're going to do is vary the aircraft angle of attack and keep track of how much moment is coming from the wing and from the h tab and the total moment, assuming the pilot does not respond to a change in the aircraft angle of attack, either due to a bump of air or anything like that. So let's set this to, well, first we have to fill out the first point. So that's 0.26, the moment from the wing is Negative 133, moment from the H tab is 133, total moment is zero. So that's our first point. Now let's let's go up in increments of, so we want a few points here, four more points, and we have about 10, 12 more degrees of uh, angle of attack that we could cover. So let's go up by increments of three. So we'll put here this plus three, we'll put here equals that negative three. 
So now we've increased our angle of attack. We've increased our angle of incidence. So let's go back and change this to 3.26. We also have to make sure that, so because our angle of attack of the wing has gone up, our center of pressure has moved forward. So it's now at 0.377. So we go in here, CG hasn't moved, but this now is at 0.377. So it moved forward. And also our measurements here have changed because of, uh, because of the center of pressure moving and just because the aircraft is, uh, the horizontal is, is changing angle. So let's go and measure that. So now the CG is only 1.41 inches in front of the lift. So this is 1.41. And the moment arm of the H tab is 45.63. So here we can make this, we can record this. So angle of attack is 3.26 of the whole aircraft. We have a negative 97 here. We have 12 from H tab. And so it's a sum of negative 86. So we can see that if we have a disturbance to increase the angle of attack, the aircraft either had a bump of air from below and the angle of attack has increased, then the response of the aircraft without any pilot input is to give a negative pitching moment. So to, to point the aircraft back towards the direction it's flying in. So that's good. So that first point there is stable. So let's keep going and bring this up to, let's bring this to six. So now the center pressure is at 0.356. So 6.26. And 0.356. So the, the lift moved forwards. And remember, as the as the angle of attack is changing, that lift is becoming a higher value too. I haven't been changing this, but the the lift is increasing. So it's actually something like 78 here now. But we're not calculating the moment in SOLIDWORKS, so just keep that in mind. So now our lift is only 0.72 after the CG. We have 45.37 here. So 0.72, 45.37. And that looks good. So we can record that one. So 6.26, negative 57. And negative 178. So it's pretty much a straight line so far. Let's do the next one. at 
338, the center pressure percent chord. Three three eight. So it's getting very close to the CG. Notice that here the lift is even higher, so eighty four. So as the as the lift has been getting higher, it's been moving towards the CG. So the overall moment created by the wing. The effect of the the lift getting higher increases the pitch down moment, but the effect of the lift moving towards the CG decreases the pitch down moment. And the result with our H dab so far is a straight line. Let's see how how it can keep going. So now we only have 0.12 from the CG and 44.99. So at 9.26, we have 10, 272, 282. So that's quite straight. Let's do one last one. So, now the center of pressure is 0.327. So if you remember the, the CG is at 32% chord, so this is right up next to it. It's actually because of the way the aircraft is tilting, it's actually a, ahead of it. Yeah, so it's at 0.30 ahead of the CG. And the other measurement is 44.48. So we can see that, let's stop there because we're about to stall, but we can see that if, if a small disturbance comes, a small bump of air increasing the angle of attack, we have a pitch down moment that for the first 10 or so degrees of change of angle of attack is proportional, it's linear. So this is very predictable even without any pilot response, the aircraft wants to point back to the direction it's, it's uh, traveling towards, proportional to the disturbance. And this is nice and predictable. So that's the case for a 32% CG. So that's a quite a forward CG. And if we remember, if we go set this back, to the cruise angle of attack. So if we go and remember, so that was 0 0.406 in here. So we had 2.30 and 45.77. So that was our cruise configuration. We can take note that our H stab is pushing downward. So we actually have more lift than the weight of our aircraft. So you might think, well, that's not super efficient. Let's check out how we can do with an aft CG so that we can get the H tab to actually lift or at least be close to closer to zero. So let's take a look at that.